Um, uh, welcome back to part three of this specially extended edition of Questions and Answers and also the last program in the series. To our final uh, panel, and I'm joined by John Gormley, TD, Green Party Leader, Minister for the Environment, Heritage and Local Government, Noel Whelan, Barrister and Political Commentator, Moraes McGuinness, Fine Gael, MEP for Ireland East, Gerard Colloran, Editor of the Irish Daily Star, and Eddie Hobbs, Financial Consultant. Uh, Eddie Hobbs, David McWilliams was prescient there, wasn't he? That was 2005. Yes. Yeah, he was. He's, he's, he's been, he's been, uh, he's been present on, on quite, quite a lot of matters. But if we look to the immediate future, I think that um, you know there's, there's, big, there's, there's issues far bigger than government coming down the tracks. And uh, the biggest issue of all uh, is, is the one related to energy. Uh, the International Energy Agency report, which came out in November, was lost in the Mali, the media Mali over banking, and it completely reverses an awful lot of the predictions that we use, that we've used to base our entire national economic planning around. And it seems to me that we're now at peak oil production globally. So we're entering the age of scarcity. We have this collective view that, you know, somehow we're going back to what, we, what was there before, with just less wealth. And, uh, and I believe we're entering a brand new economic age, and, and, and the future is all about energy efficiency, energy creation, clean technology, etc., etc. And we have a lot of catching up to do in order to prepare for that, but with great potential to do so. And do you think the public are ready for that message? No, the, no this is the problem. It, it's not until uh, oil hits 200, 250, 300 euros a barrel that people will accept it. Because it's a very personal thing. Um, but, but even nationally, our preparedness really is quite pathetic. For example, our most recent reports on oil, on oil supplies and on what we would do in the event of oil shortages are two huge reports. And there isn't one sentence dealing with the possibility that we're actually at peak oil. Even Fatty Burrell, the chief economist of the IA, reckons it's 2020. Let me bring John Gormley in here. As, as he said, this is your politics. This mm -hmm. is why you're in politics. Now, you can't save your seats, but you're trying to save the planet, as mm -hmm. it were. Mm -hmm. um, so what's your response to Eddie Hobbs? Well, Eddie is absolutely right. Uh, and we have uh, twin problems. Uh, first of all, scarcity of oil. Uh, and the second issue, of course, is climate change. Uh, and yet, despite the uh, global recession, uh, I was at a Council of Ministers meeting there just, uh, just last week, and it was very clear that our emissions are actually growing by 1.9% per, per, per year, despite a global economic recession. So we're using up uh, our oil resources, and uh, of course it is the major countries now, the emerging dynamic economies such as China, India, and others, um, who are using up these very scarce oil resources. Now, they want to grow their economies. The fact is, though, and this is the... I and they the would point, say, you guys have polluted the planet. Don't expect us to slow down. Well, I mean, we're, the, the point about, I suppose, climate change is that we're in this together, and I think the Chinese know that, particularly in the Delta regions, the, mm. uh, and I think the Indians know it as well, that they are very susceptible uh, to climate change. Uh, and uh, we see it ourselves. We know that... Uh, but, John, climate change is not catching the public imagination. You're, you're, you're right, I mean, the, the Green Movement is dominated by climatologists and environmentalists, not mm. pragmatic you know, economic thinking. Well, I would, I would disagree well, I mean, with that. The actually. two reports that have just yeah. come out from the Green Minister, Eamon Ryan, mm -hmm. there isn't one sentence in those reports about peak oil. Not one. Well, in two yeah, weeks, so have that, say, Eddie, Eddie, can I say this? I mean, Any time you have listened to Eamon Ryan on this program and other programs, he has spoken at length about peak oil. But that's why I can't and understand I, it. And I agree 100% But then why you. isn't it in the report? I, I launched a report today, for example, uh, and I mentioned the whole question of scarce oil resources today. Uh, and the fact of the matter is, and you, you, you said this yourself, we have an opportunity here. We can lead the way in terms of green tech. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you look at what is available, the UN has actually estimated that by 2020, $4.7 trillion will be invested these are in big, this yeah, whole okay, area. We have all these, now, these are big issues, no, Greenland. Yeah. How can they be popularized and brought into the mainstream of where power is won and lost? But I think the Green Movement has been very successful, at, initially at least, at popularizing concern for climate change and energy sustainability. One of the difficulties is all that has taken a shape now with the changing economic circumstances. And it's going to be really difficult to tell people they have to worry about the future of the planet when they're worried about sustaining and holding on to their own jobs. I believe that the Irish public want the truth as difficult and all as it might be, and they didn't want waffle in this campaign. And I think they might swallow that tough message now if the language was clearer sure, and, and more easy to, to take on. How clear can the language be? You're editing well, nobody, the Irish Daily Star. Nobody needs to be convinced anymore about the difficulties we face in terms of oil and energy sources. But we need to become a green island. I agree with Maria. I think this is becoming a mainstream issue. It might be dangerous, actually, to the Green Party because people will literally steal their clothes. 
We need to become uh, green for wind and water, and we need to become green for farming. We need to be literally the green island. But I think the vast majority of people out there are more concerned, I agree as well with what Noel said, with the bread they're going to put on the table tomorrow evening, uh, or tomorrow morning as well, and the mortgages and the negative equity and the clip you showed earlier demonstrates only too well the abandonment of good politics that uh, we have witnessed in this country over the last 10 years and the need to restore trust in politics. Okay, let me ask all of you a question. What incremental change may have come in in Ireland in the past 20? Imagine somebody watching this program in 50 years' time, watching this. This is meant to be Ireland from the 80s to now. What incremental change crept in, crept in under the radar, never a headline and yet was a significant? a significant change? To answer your question, I think it has been a growing affluence. And, uh, you know, I, I recall the first time I was ever on a plane when I was 19 years of age, I was emigrating to Germany at the time. Um, we don't have th that level of emigration at the moment, uh, but we certainly have a generation that has got used to having a good lifestyle. Uh, and I'm talking about our kids and that who uh, take things, I think, for granted. Now, we are, just to come back to what Eddie was saying earlier on, I think the whole peak oil situation is going to change things dramatically, globally. And that level of affluence, and I think, you know, it's is just going to disappear. Now, I think we need a real debate, though, about the, the you know, the economic um, uh, fixation with economic growth, because that in itself is something that has never, ever been questioned. And, uh, you know, if we, if we are, you know, if we ask ourselves an honest question, how can you have infinite economic growth on a finite planet? That is, I believe, the question as we move forward into the 21st century. But you can't right, that was what you called in, the, in your last incarnation of the Christmas time at Bertie at one stage. That's correct. Yes, yes. Yeah.